This is the Metla Toledo uh, 7 Go pH meter. As you can see, it's a handheld device. We can hold it within our hands, uh, which is very useful because it means you can take it into the field or you can take it across various um, tanks that you may need to measure the pH in. So it's very versatile. And this is actually a great model to use. It's quite robust, uh, although it is quite expensive, maybe from a student perspective. So it's worth ensuring that you do look after this piece of kit. It's waterproof and it's a very reliable piece of kit. So anyone who is wanting to measure um, pH and seawater and they want it to be temperature compensated, which is what this piece of kit does, I would really highly recommend this, this piece of kit. So first things first, let's have a general look at it. So it's in this protective cover, this particular model, but some of them don't have that. This section you can hold in your hand so that you can conveniently uh, see the screen. Um, at the back, we've got the section where the batteries go in and out. So you just slide that down and open it up and you can see the batteries. And then the pH and temperature um, coupled probe, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, is connected at the top here. So this is the temperature um, section here, and this is um, the pH meter connection here. So when you do go to use this piece of kit, it's always worth just making sure that those are secured um, very well before you switch it on. So to switch the piece of kit on, you press this white button here, and then you'll see that the display starts um, booting up, and we get various items on display here. So on the top left hand corner, we have the battery life. We've got two dark bars there indicating that there's um, a very full battery in there. On the top right hand side, uh, here, we have this three tier section with three full bars next to a picture of a probe. And what this indicates is the health of the probe. So if, this de uh, if these uh, full bars um, decline, then it means that the condition of the probe is reducing, so you may need to think about cleaning it or maybe uh, recalibrating it or replacing it. Here we have the pH reading, and then here we have a uh, temperature to one decimal place. Okay, you'll notice that we keep our probe in a harsh salt three molar potassium chloride. So take care of this. This um, does have an associated Kosh form. So make sure you're wearing um, gloves and um, goggles when you're handling this and make sure you rinse the probe after you've used it. But just to talk about the probe here. So this probe is a very expensive probe if you're a student, so bear in mind to handle this with care. One of these costs about £200. Now it's expensive because it has a thermometer integrated in here with a pH sensor. And also this section here is made of um, glass quite often and the wires in here can be quite um, sensitive to knocks and bangs. So basically um, the last thing you want to do is drop this because if you drop it you're likely to break it and we probably won't have the cash to replace it. So just handle this with very great care. Don't be in a rush when you're handling this because that's when mistakes happen. Just take your time. Another thing to bear in mind with this probe is that it's not entirely waterproof. So this section is, so this is a section that you will be putting into your sample or your experimental tank to measure the pH. Say you're doing, for example, ocean acidification experiments. But this section here, this gray section is not waterproof. So you must not submerge this underwater, otherwise you'll break it. Okay. Another thing about these probes is that we don't let them air dry. These, this section here must remain moist. So if you accidentally leave it out to air dry and you go home, uh, either go back straight away or contact someone who can get it back into the storage solution. Basically, whenever you're using this before and after, you should ensure it's in the storage solution uh, so that it keeps in great condition for the next user and for a substantial period of time. So with any piece of kit, one of the first things we need to do is make sure that it's calibrated before we use it. And with a pH meter, we tend to use these um, 
pH buffers. So the piece of kit that you use will, intend, will depend entirely on the manufacturer's guidelines, but for uh, the pH meter that we're using here, this Metla Toledo, we do a three point calibration. So we do it with buffers of four, seven, and 10. And that, and that allows us to give a good spectrum around our targeted pH, me, uh, pH readings, which in the case of seawater is somewhere between um, 7.8 to 8.1. So it covers that, those targeted values are well within this range. Now I've already decanted some of these buffers into smaller tubes, which will conveniently fit our probe into. And doing this means um, that we are quite conservative with what we use and that we can make um, our resources last as long as possible. Um, buffers can be, can have a bit of a shelf life, a bit like food or drink uh, once you open them. So it's good practice to maybe label them with a date when they're opened and follow your, the manufacturer's uh, storage instructions. So now we're going to measure the pH, sorry, now we're going to calibrate our pH. So I've just taken this probe out of this free molar potassium chloride solution. So I'm going to give this a rinse with distilled water first. So there we go, giving it a rinse. Give it a gentle uh, shake to get excess fluid from the end here. And then I'm going to place it into the first calibrating buffer. So on the screen here, you'll notice that we have the program written as B1. And there are four values after this. We've got 7, 4, uh, 1.6, and then 10. So this program, which I followed, uh, placed, programmed into this meter following the instruction, man uh, the instruction manual, we can pick any three values out of these four to calibrate this pH meter, or we can do all of them if you wanted to. So do refer to the instruction manual. But today we're going to program this. We're going to calibrate with three different buffers. We've got these four... Um, Remember I mentioned before, we've got seven, four, and 10 that we're going to calibrate with. And very helpfully, the numbers are in the order of preference for calibration. So if you're on too sure, if you're not too sure, or you can't remember, do refer to these numbers to remind you which order to do them. So we're gonna do seven first. So seven is the green one here, and it's this one here. So I'm gonna open that up. Now, because these containers are quite, quite narrow, they'll be susceptible to falling over. So I place them into the beaker um, to stand them up. Now, when you put your probe in, give it a gentle shake to make sure you remove any air bubbles at the end of the probe there, and then place it into the beaker so that nothing spills out of the way. So you can see that pH value has already changed. But to calibrate it, all I do is simply press Cal. And you'll see this flashing box saying Cal 1. So it's letting me know that I'm calibrating at the first level. And then um, periodically, I'll just give it a gentle agitation in the buffer solution until I believe that this has settled for a reading. So I may go off and do something for a few minutes and come back to this and repeat this process until I'm happy that this value is fairly constant. So I'm just going to speed it up for the purpose of this tutorial, but I'm happy with that reading for now. Um, but I would normally leave it a bit longer, but once I'm happy with that reading, I then press read to accept the value. And then you'll see a percentage appear telling us um, that the percentage acceptance for the targeted buffer is very high. So we're happy with that. So it's at this stage, once we get that percentage value that we can now take this probe out of the buffer and take it to the next one. So remember I was talking about the order here. So we've done seven and now we're gonna do four. So four is this uh, pink one just here, which I've already decanted into this little one. And between 
these buffers, I just give that a quick rinse to wash off any of the excess uh, pH 7 buffer. Give it a, um, a gent little shake to remove excess fluid. And then, once again, we put the probe in, give it a gentle agitation, and then pop it into the beaker. And then we press cal again. And we can see now that the box is flashing at two. It's, it's calibrating at the second buffer level. And we repeat the process until that reading is settled. And basically we repeat that until we've finished with our pH 10 at the end. Okay, so we finished calibrating now and uh, before we move on to the next step for measuring seawater pH or a sample pH, um, if you find that you accidentally um, press read rather than calibrate, then you have to repeat the whole calibration process again. So do take your time, don't rush it so you don't make mistakes. Uh, but on the last point where we've done finished with the last buffer, which is the pH 10, we've got the percentage and you're ready to start reading your samples. All you need to do is press read again and it goes back to reading mode. And before we measure our seawater sample, we literally just give the probe an extra rinse again and a little gentle shake to remove the excess fluid. And now we're ready to measure pH. You'll notice with the pH meter that the, the wire from the probe to the meter is kept very loose and it's not coiled tightly. So you don't, um, basically, if we, top, if we create any kinks or we coil this wire tightly, we reduce the quality of the wire and it'll adjust our um, conductivity reading that we have uh, from the probe. So do keep it nice and loose, don't coil it tightly, please. And for any troubleshooting, if you have any issues with the pH, uh, the normal troubleshooting um, protocols would be to check that the battery life is okay, Maybe you need to replace the batteries. Maybe you need to recalibrate the probe. Maybe the probe needs some cleaning. And those are the steps I would take uh, until um, I've tried to solve the problem. Uh, but if that doesn't d solve the problem, then it may be that the probe is due to be replaced. And before you store it away, remember to make sure the probe is back in its uh, three molar potassium chloride storage solution so it keeps nice and clean and moist and turn the um, pH meter off by pressing the butter power button just the once.